I just want to remind everyone that we have a Facebook page, so connect with us. You'll be able to see our events, different sponsors, um, uh, putting things on our page, as well as we get black worms each meeting. So if you want worms, uh, hook up with us on uh, the Facebook. We also have an official page um, and also the website. So we have all these things. Check them out. They're available. And I just want to remind everyone that we do have a Breeders Award program. So if you are currently breeding fish, why not get rewarded for it? You'll get some points, bring some fish into the auction, everyone will uh, win. And just some announcements, there is um, March 11th and 12th is a huge weekend for fish keeping. Uh, there is the NEC that is up in Connecticut, Rocky Hill. Um, there is also the big fish deal and the um, the Carolina Aquarium Workshop and the Delaware County Aquarium um, Auction as well. So it is a big weekend. Uh, check it out. I'll go ahead and, and find this and post it to our Facebook as well so you can see it and find it and click on the links and have a good time as well. And our speaker today is very chic. Um, unfortunately, we um, had to reschedule Scott uh, he'll be back probably either October or November. Uh, but I just want to thank Barry profusely for bailing us out today. Thank you. And he's going to do a, a talk about aquascaping. Uh, I can tell you, I, I made this presentation about two years ago. I was really heavily into planted tanks. Six months ago, I also got a saltwater tank. So now I'm like kind of, if, if I did this over again, I was thinking maybe I should include some more saltwater. So the saltwater people, hello. To the freshwater people, hello. To planted people, to not planted cichlids lovers, hello everyone. <laughs> We're gonna learn about a little bit about uh, one of the, <laughs> I guess one of the topics of fish keeping that you don't hear about too often. It's aquascaping. So the people that the fish people that I've encountered, there's people that are only into breeding and have like just tanks and rows of just the fish. I I see people that um that you know have ponds and that's great. And people who have the fish and have the coral and kind of throw everything in there, and it's like, oh, look at my fish, it's cool. But when people have actual aquascapes, uh, I think it's a, it's a kind of top-level aquarium. So we're going to do a little presentation. If I can get this started, let's see. How do I do this? There we go. So has anybody heard of a landscape? Everybody? Everybody, right? That's a, yeah, good point, right? My jokes are great today. <laughs> but an aquascape, whoa, this is an aquascape. So this is not a landscape, this is an aquascape. A landscape? An aquascape. Mine look just like this, by the way. I saw it. I'm like, oh, this is going to be, I'll get it done tonight. A landscape? An aquascape? All right. A landscape? Everybody? Aquascape. Wow, this is great. I never did a group thing like this before. All right, guys, so what is aquascaping? Well, it's, it's more than just a fishbowl. You know, people take some time and effort to put together the scene. It's an underwater scene. It's not your typical pirate ship with a little uh, you know, uh, treasure chest that has bubbles in it. I know, those things are still cool. Don't worry, I, I love it. But it's an underwater scene that um, a lot of times you'll see with plants, with stone, with stick, sometimes just one or the other. And we're gonna go through the different types of aquascapes. We're gonna go through um, a bunch of different things today. So. First, we're going to start with the origin of aquariums. This is my only slide, Mark DeNero. I know I can give a probably three-day weekend tour or a conversation about this, but I'm going to go real quick. This is the best picture I found on the internet, right? Victorian era, okay, great. Fish keeping started, I guess, by the Sumerians, the, the Romans. Robert Warrington was a famous chemist. He planned, he added water and saw that it would give off enough oxygen to support animals. Is this the, the quick cliff notes of it? Where's Mark? There he is. Am I doing good? All right, good. So English naturalist Philip Henry Go Gosset, Goose, I'm going to say, I'm going to butcher it. Wait until we get to the Japanese ones later. <laughs> Aqua is water, right? Arium, a place for relating to, so it's a place for water. And this is, um, again, a picture of 1865, according to the internet. So that's my source. <laughs> Takashi Amano. So when I first gave this presentation, it was about two years ago. He's actually since passed away, I believe, of pneumonia. Um, 
He was born in 54. He's been a photographer and started the company called Aqua Design Amana in 1982 and really considered the father of aquascaping. This is his house. So next time your wife tells you that you have a big aquarium, hey, there's no room, but this guy just literally built a room for it and a table, and it's still there. Here's some samples of some of his work. So here's, um, here's the different types of aquascapes. Right? We're going to go into Dutch, Iwagami, Taiwanese, jungle, biotope, and El Natural. So Dutch style. This was kind of popular, I think, in like the 70s and 80s. Um, very colorful scapes. You don't, really, you don't see stones. You don't see sticks. You kind of get the idea that plants are arranged in street-like patterns. And I think so, these are some of the st most stunning aquariums that you can see. This guy is... Um, uh, Tom Barr out of California, he's like kind of an online presence, and this is one of his tanks, which is like, maybe it's a good camera, but I don't know that. I, I, I don't get colors like that. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Here's another version of one. Iwagami is a different style where it uses stones. You ha I, need, I know you need at least three. It's, it's, it's kind of the like, kind of feng shui of, of aquascaping. So you usually use a lot of small fish, very minimal, open, simple. And I don't know how he got those grass to curve that way without any filters or anything else. Maybe it's photoshopped, but I've seen a couple of them, so I think somehow. Ah, secrets. Got him. So I'm not going to pronounce these for you, but these are, the, these are what the stones are called. Everybody got that? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> I'm going to show you guys a couple examples. You can see they're not just stones, or not just sharp stones, but you see this a lot with dragon stones called, and regular hair grass. Hair grass, you in the back, of the, you use like smaller leaves in the front, and you always have some kind of larger focal point on the right and the lower on the, on the other side. In Taiwanese, they have a lot of varying terraces, which I think is a really cool feature you don't see very often. They're more diorama-like, so you'll see like figurines associated with them. There's one I thought was cute. Ah! Oh, look at this one. There's the ode. This, this is the first tank I ever owned a couple years ago. So I, I tried to make it Philadelphia, and I got made fun of. But I thought it turned out cool, right? Got, it's true. It's a little skyscraper in the background, Liberty Bell, City Hall, Love Park. I guess I was Taiwanese. I didn't know it. Uh, I bought a lot of it on eBay. and then I, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, jungle is probably the easiest type of aquascape you can do. It's literally a jungle. You don't cut it, you know, maybe once a year. Uh, you kind of just let everything kind of grow wild, and it's cool to see nature, you know, really do its thing within the right conditions. Here's another example of one, maybe a little bit more controlled, but you can see it's, it's, it's always a wild look. This is one with some nice angels. Um, another one is we call them biotopes. You'll see a lot of these pictures that you're going to see, by the way, they're from the International Aquascaping Contest. Uh, so they break it out into different sections, and this is biotope. So this is literally, this is like you'll see leaves that, that happen with this type of hardscape and this type of uh, rock in nature. So you're going to see some from South America. You'll see, that's a South American one. You'll see some from, you know, these are cichlids. This is the El Natural. These guys apparently don't use any water changes. They just literally have like a natural process. Um, a lot of times they use potting soil. Um, and a heavy light, and apparently I don't think you use a filter even. It just I guess you need to have some kind of water movement though, for it to work. Yeah, some kind of yes. Not mine. Oh. Oh, there's a white BMW outside. You want me to announce it? I'm like, well, I don't care. It's not mine. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, there's a white BMW outside. If it's still running, if anybody has one and wants to turn it off. What kind of plates? New Jersey plates. OK. Yep, I'm still here. It's not my car. <laughs> this one, I think, won first place, if I, if I, if I remember, in 2013. And it looks like a real photo of something, but it's, it's kind of crazy, the detail that some people get using various mosses, different rocks. So these are some more. You'll see, uh, the, again, the, the use of mosses, and they, they tie it down, and kind of you, you have to trim it constantly. 
And you see in the back, you create perspective by using smaller stones. There's another one you can, you'll, you'll see there's a popular theme where there's like a path kind of leading towards the, the horizon. There's another one. I got a lot of these guys, ready? Some trees. Trees are also a pretty popular theme. This one, Michael Wong, he's probably one of the most famous and I think one of the best out there. I mean, he, he did this, I forget what, this, what kind of material this is. It's some kind of maybe moss, but I had never seen anything, a planet tank that's only like these reds. It's pretty cool. That's a really cool, like bonsai tree underwater. This guy didn't win. It was, they called it like two, two stage, but I think it's like unreal. To take the amount of time to do this probably takes probably close to a year. Here's some cool rockscapes. Some more. You see that the way that they create the perspective. And <laughs> so they look like they're huge, but the there's mostly smaller tanks. They're mostly, I guess, they're they're in like 60 liters. So between 20 to like 60 is pretty popular. But they have ones that are 100 plus too. Those are they're harder to do. We'll get into it a little bit. Here's Michael Wong again on the top. The one at the bottom I thought was really cool. It's like just a different, you know, different style than you see. Another one looking like under the bridges. So this is, this, this is the unique ones, right? So this guy actually took, or Essence, and I'm not sure if it's a girl or a guy, but they, they removed some of the sand from the bottom of the glass, so it makes it almost look like reflection. Like, how creative is that? Pretty cool, right? This one looks like Machu Picchu with the, uh, like, steps. Yeah, the rice paddy fields in Peru. I still don't know how he did this. Mark? All right. Styrofoam, that makes sense. And wrap it. Interesting. Ready for these? There's a volcano one. I couldn't draw a circle that good. I don't know how he did it. <laughs> these are just unreal. It's almost like you're look, like on the forest floor looking up. And the top one is like some futuristic Star Wars. I don't even know. So why keep an aquarium? Should I ask all you guys or does everybody here have one? Uh, OK. <laughs> My first group, of, they didn't know. Uh, well, yeah, why keep aquarium? Uh, great. <laughs> well, well, my answer, yeah. My answer is that they're great pets. You can have a garden. They're living furniture. It's art. It's therapy. It's cheaper than drugs. Maybe. Arguable. Yeah, you're right. I guess exp cheaper than expensive drugs. Maybe not either of that. So here, here might be my only saltwater tank. But this I thought was a really cool tank. You can see, you know, this is just a creative tank in general. But what, what, the guy, th th what they did with the ledge. That was amazing. So if you guys ever want to set up an aquarium, it, I highly recommend it to everyone here. These are things you should think about. <laughs> we'll skip this slide. So uh, Takashi Amano, this is his, you know, before he passed away, he, he completed this exhibit. This is in, uh, in Portugal, and I would love to go here before I die, before it gets taken down. It's got to be amazing. I've seen pictures of it on Facebook, articles. If anybody's around Portugal, I would say check it out. So the opposite of that, that's the biggest tank. Here's one of the smallest ones, probably. Here's how you set up a fish tank if you're into sushi. <laughs> thank you, thank you for that one, thank you. Feel free, no booing, everybody, but feel free to cheer me on. I'm doing great, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, low tech versus high tech. So this is the big difference when you're doing planet tech. We're going to give you a couple, some more pictures of various types so you see what I'm saying. Right, here's a triangle. Here's a U-shape with fish line. Great. Here's an island. And this is something that when I was trying to set up a tank, you know, I, I researched, and this has to do a lot with photography as well and artwork in general and nature. Um, the rule of thirds, basically you, you divide uh, the scene in thirds, and it kind of gives you idea of where your placement of the focal point should be to make it interesting. So here's an example of a picture. And what made the picture cool 
or what made it uh, you know easier to look at is that it's not quite centered. It's it, it's placed in one of these kind of four you know places. So when they say when you do aquascapes, you don't want to have too many focal points. In fact, you should only have one. And if you have a huge tank, maybe you can have two, but you should always have a main one and kind of build around it to make it the most interesting. So George Clooney, everybody thinks he's pretty handsome. I think he's nice too. Uh, apparently, you know, he's got like a perfect face, according to Google. <laughs> Which is always true. Here's some golden, here's golden ratio in nature. I'm not going to get to the math behind it, but apparently it works. Again, Google, Google backed me up. Here's some golden ratio in architecture. Places you wouldn't necessarily even th thought would actually you know, measure out this way, but they do. It's, that, it's very popular in Greek. I didn't realize in more popular architecture, or more newer architecture also. Golden ratio in logos. Fibonacci spiral. It's also the, the, the way that you calculate this is, is using that golden ratio and, and, uh, and kind of just, you know, in, in, this, in this picture, what they try to do is show you how you start, when you first look at this picture, you look right at the focal point, and you kind of, as your eyes make out of the scene, that's the way that it goes. Maybe the red line is there, that helps. So creating perspective. Again, you'll see this, this path kind of theme very, very often. I guess it gets, you know, kind of grows into the, into the horizon. You'll see bigger rocks up front. You'll see a more shallow substrate in the front, and it gets higher as you go to the back. You see more prominent features and, and shades. Here's some pictures that I got from the, um, the, the guy posted how he kind of thought of it. Then he put the heart scale up. Then, you know, then he did all the planting, and then he had to wait, trim, et cetera. And it's kind of cool to see you know, somebody draw it down and actually take the time. And, and you can see what goes in, in the middle step. You know, there's different types of sand, and there's one that have nutrients in it, so they use different substrate. Here's the hardscape before the planet tank. Here's one that we, I have pictures of, like maybe a dozen or so. We'll just go through them quickly, kind of the beginning to end. I thought the end product is one of the coolest things you could, you know, I think it's such a cool looking point. It's so mysterious. You just want to like look down there and see who's behind there. Oh, plants. So here's what he did. He put a bunch of these stones in the back and kind of get, create that perspective. And you can see real in the back, you can see like those little stones that has a little kind of bumps. It makes it look like a faraway mountain. These are different types of dosing things he put in there. Look how deep it is. You wouldn't necessarily think that, right? But to get that depth, he actually put like uh, these bags of pumice to build it up that way. If you ever try to use sand and get it to stay still, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go through briefly just different types of plants. You have bunch plants, you have mosses, you have floating. Um, you know, you'll, you'll assemble them, again, different ways to create your aquascape. A lot of t people will use the hot colors, like the reds, to be the focal point and then build around it. A lot of times you'll see smaller fish, so cardinals are very popular. I th those are maybe white cloud minute. Yep, good. Uh, definitely some rummies and then some live bears on the bottom. You know, you don't have to go any plants. You can just have some pretty cool rocks and some pretty cool fish. That always works. Here's a discus tank I was talking about. You know, this one doesn't have any, ta doesn't have any um, plants at all, but the comparison of like the red fish with the red wood and the smaller plants and the cool rock work. I thought it was just a really cool looking tank. There's another one. I think they, they had like, tw like uh, you know, seven different pieces of wood and they just thought of that and, come and somehow made it together. It's pretty neat. This is my attempt. Not bad, right? That's how I know about sand doesn't stay. It's hard. <laughs> oh, yeah, please, please, please. There's the accidents. Tom, I told you they were going to be in here. We sold that tank. This is the 150 when I had it up. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, I sold this. I have a 180 now. And I have the pictures, but I couldn't, I, I didn't put them in. But thank you guys for listening. Hope everybody enjoyed.